Hi everyone, Quinton here and welcome to the now snowy Cairngorm Mountains in the Scottish Highlands. In this demonstration we're going to follow on from the tonal underpainting and deal with the main colour block in layers. This is the reference photo I'm using for this painting. It's a mountain called Ben Moor in the Isle of Mull. I'm not trying to replicate the photograph exactly in oil paints. I'm just using it as, as a guide. One thing I would like to change is the background mountains. I feel they're a bit flat in the photograph. The painting is going to be set a little bit later on in the day, so the shadows on the background mountains are a little bit longer, which would give it a bit more depth and interest in the background. Here's where we left off from the last episode with the tonal underpainting and this was just to establish the main tone and feel of the picture and where the main elements are going to be positioned. In this demonstration I'm going to be blocking in the main colour parts. The aim is not to worry too much about detail at this stage but just to try and get the right colour in the right place effectively. I typically start with the sky in most paintings as this is the most distant element in any picture. Getting a realistic blue sky colour can actually be quite tricky and in the past I've tended to use just French ultramarine and this has resulted in a bit of an acidic looking sort of sky. So what I tend to do now is use a mixture of cobalt blue and French ultramarine with white. Here I'm progressively putting more white into the sky as I go down to show the atmospheric perspective. Um, I'm trying to use a variety of brush strokes as well, just to give a bit of interest. I add tiny quantities of cadmium red and cadmium yellow into those distant clouds, just to give them a bit more life, a bit more warmth into them. I model the cloud shapes using a fan brush, just to give them softer edges. I can also add more blue or add more of the lighter sky colour, just to define where I want, want clouds to be. And this is an iterative process, so I keep repeating this. When modelling the clouds, I tend to clean the brush between using different tones, so I have a bit more control over how the final look's going to be. The sun's going to be on the left of this painting. Um, I try to get the warmest and lightest colours towards this left-hand side. So that's the sky block in done. Now I'm going to work on the mountain areas using French ultra, ultramarine and uh, raw umber and a bit of white I'm starting to work in the escarpment areas on the mountain so this is where the exposed basalt is being shown. For any given area I try to get a mid-tone um, because in subsequent layers I'm going to be adding highlights and shadows. While I'm trying to keep the brushwork quite loose and not really put in too much detail I am trying to keep the lay of the land in there and in this case it's the sort of the, the horizontal layers of the rock. I'm altering the colours slightly by changing the proportions of French ultramarine or raw umber, sometimes adding in a little bit of red, cadmium red, just to mix it up a bit. So now in the shadow area I'm adding a bit more of the darkest parts of that, trying to capture the horizontal layers of rock. Now moving on to a lower escarpment in the hill face. While I tend to work from things in the background and move my way forward, I also, within that, try to use the darkest colours first, and these are typically then overlaid by lighter colours. Although sometimes I'm a little bit erratic with what I do. Compared to the reference photograph, I've actually made the shadows quite a lot stronger in this because I want the light to be lower, or the sun to be lower, so it's a later time in the, in the day. As the sun is lower, I think the colours that are catching the sunlight will also be uh, slightly warmer, so I've added a bit more cadmium red into the mix on the hill on the right. <laughs> 
So in this colour blocking phase, nothing is finalised, things will change later. Um, there's always modifications to do when you add highlights and add further shadows later on. I've switched colours now, I'm using more of a mix with, with more raw umber than um, French ultramarine. And these are the more foreground hills where it's more heather and, and bracken. So it's a little bit more browner. I'm just trying to mark in the main dark areas now. I'm using a dagger brush which is really quite useful because you can get a variety of marks on the canvas using this. If you hold it horizontally you can get lines which is good for marking out the, the rock formations or the layers of the lava flows where they outcrop on the hillside. But you can also drag it sideways to get more of an effect of, of grassy areas in between the outcrops. I've added a bit more white and possibly some yellow ochre into the mix now to get some slightly lighter areas blocked in. And I keep changing between the darker paint and the slightly lighter paint to, to show the variation in the hillsides. I'm trying to be systematic in getting the dark areas done, but I do tend to vary uh, where I work on the canvas and also whether I'm working in darks or lights. No other reason apart from being a bit disorganised. I've added quite a bit more yellow ochre into the paint mix now to try and capture these sunlit uh, sort of dead grass on the hillsides and this will help to give the painting a whole lot of more contrast and effectively define the shapes of the hills. As already mentioned, I want to increase the contrast between the lights and the shadows and have bigger shadow areas compared to the reference photograph. So I'm having to make up quite a bit of the extent of where the shadows go. So I'm overlaying some of the yellow ochre paint into the underlying darks there to get the areas where the sun's shining. I'm trying to keep my brushwork fairly varied because a lot of this paint will actually be shown through in, in later layers. That stream area, I'm, I'm narrowing that up a bit because it was far too pronounced. That central shadow area needed to have a bit more interest in it, so I'm actually mixing on the canvas here a bit of the yellow ochre just to try and show some form and, and morphology within that shadow area. When doing this colour blocking layer, it's really hard. You have to fight all the time not to add more and more detail. It's a temptation that I always have and I always have to try and resist it. I'm also using burnt sienna quite a bit, which is, gives that reddish colour. And that's quite effective for Scottish landscapes because there's a lot of bracken around and this is dead bracken that dies back in the winter. So I'm still working on this hillside here, mixing up the paint between various ratios of yellow ochre, burnt sienna, raw umber with French ultramarine and titanium white, just to give it a bit of interest and I'm just trying to block in the main form of the land. I've returned to some of the highlights in the top area because I think they needed a bit more work because really I wanted a quite a strong sunlight coming from the left and in order to do that to make it appear strong you have to have quite a big contrast between your lights and your dark areas even though these hills are actually quite a long way away. I'm continuing with this process until most of that tonal underpainting has, has been eliminated. It doesn't matter if there are bits of it showing through because it's on the same brownish sort of colour spectrum.
this stage is very much an iterative process of just going back and modifying what you've already done. I've switched to a, a large rigger brush here to get a bit more detail uh, into that shadow area. I tend to use Rosemary & Co brushes. After some experimentation with quite a few manufacturers, I, I do believe they're, they're some of the best brushes around for, for the price point. I'm doing a bit more detail than I probably should be at this stage. Um, but I wanted to get the essence of the landscape done. So when I, this can dry and then the later layer, I, I can work and modify on that layer. So I'm faffing around a bit more with the rigger brush just trying to put a bit more detail in and soon I'm coming to the end of this block-in stage for these distant hills. So within the basalt layers on the escarpment there are actually uh, vertical joints and they will cast shadows so you do have both horizontal and vertical elements within that rock face. It's difficult to know when to stop at this stage because you always want to add more detail. It's always good practice to stand back from the canvas and have a look at the picture from across the room. So for the rest of this episode, I'm going to be working on the foreground areas, the tidal creek, the mudflats, the banks, the sands, and also some grassy areas as well. The water here is reflecting the sky. I'm using some of that sky mix for the distant water. And where the hillside's reflecting, I'm adding a bit of yellow ochre and also raw umber into that paint. I've moved the channel bend there slightly to the left. I wasn't happy how I did it in the underpainting. I'm using vertical brush strokes in the reflections here to capture some of that wateriness. I'm actually blending wet in wet on the canvas. In the foreground part of the tidal creek we're not actually seeing the reflection of the clouds or the mountains. We're looking more through the water and seeing the bottom of the, um, of the tidal channel. As we move up towards the horizon more, you start having more and more of the reflection colour from the sky coming in. So I'm introducing that progressively, so it's a bit more blue, a little bit of cobalt blue, until I'm reaching the point where the mountain and the sky are reflecting in the shadow. This transition is fairly smooth, so I'm using a, a fan brush there just to, to give it a bit of a blend at this stage. And also adding sort of vertical movements in that as well. Adding more highlights into the reflection using yellow ochre. This tidal channel is the main foreground interest and using linear perspective it's the main tool for bringing the eye into the picture. So I'm continuing to add vertical strokes into the reflection Ultimately, I've got to decide how this is going to change in later layers, depending on what I do to the background mountains. But it doesn't need to be too detailed because you know, the reflections typically are a bit blurry and a little bit darker. So while the paint is still wet, I'm adding horizontal marks to show how the reflection is being modified by the ripples on the channel. This creates a greater illusion of it actually looking like real water. Right, so now I'm starting to add in some of the browns of the, of the mud banks that are defining the channel edges. I'm also narrowing the channel somewhat because I think it was too wide for where it was in the distance. Where the sand and mud is wet on the edges, I'm adding a bit more of that sky mix in there 
and doing it along this bank here because it is partially reflecting the sky colour still even though it's not actually water, it's wet enough to actually do that. Mainly using raw umber with uh, French ultramarine, a little bit of that and also some titanium white and yellow ochre just to mark in these, these mud bank areas. It's gone back to the horizon line because there's a dark seaweed layer in the distance there. It's quite complicated in this back area of the painting because of the perspective. There are a lot of tidal channels and so we're having a lot of narrow space lines to create the illusion of that distance. I've switched to the foreground now and I'm using virtually neat burnt umber to put in some real dark areas that are just around some, some grassy, grassy areas on the left there. They may be some of the darkest bits of the whole picture. So I'm just refining some of the bank structure now. I sometimes switch hands when I want to do marks that seem more natural. I'm left handed but I tend to use my right sometimes for certain tasks. Um, now I'm putting in some seaweed here. Now this seaweed is partially submerged so some of it's sticking out and will appear darker whereas some of it is going to be under that water and will have a little bit more of that skylight reflection showing on it. More on that later. So I'm using a thinner brush now to mark in some of this seaweed and I want to have it orientated like the tides dragged it out so it's, it's orientated down the channel and this will aid in leading the eye down that channel. And as we get further into the distance some of that seaweed is, is more, has a more horizontal look to it. I'm using cadmium yellow and French ultramarine to mix that green. So this is the grassy areas um, on the margins of the channel. So I guess these bits only get submerged in, in really high tides in the spring. So I'm marking a little bit lighter. I've had a little bit of chrome yellow, a bit more titanium white to, to lift up that value a bit more. So the top parts of the, the grassy knolls, if you like, um, are capturing more light than the, the edges of it. So you don't have to draw all the blades of grass, it's just to get the representation and the eye will actually make up what it is naturally if the colours are right and the tone is right. To get more of a sense of depth going into that distance where there's different mud banks and channels, I've used a smaller brush to put some more horizontal markings. I'm adding a bit more of a blue colour to those bank margins because they're really reflecting the light. It needs to make it look wet. Okay, so this is going to be quite a hard bit of the painting. This is sort of a pebbly, pebbly but mud bank if you like. Um, and really on there it's quite complicated and some of it's quite wet and there's little pools of water. So I'm adding um, some of that reflected sky mix, the wet watery look. Um, and adding that between what's going to be some stones and seaweed in there. Now to show some of that seaweed is actually submerged, I've added a bit more French ultramarine to my burnt umber mix and I'm blurring the edges around that seaweed. And that will have the effect of it looking like it's underwater, whereas the darker areas, which I'll add to in the detailed layer, uh, will look crisper and therefore look like it's coming out of the water and hopefully it should have quite a good effect. So we're approaching the end of this block in phase. Um, I'm trying not to do too much detail but I think you have to do any wet in wet techniques like this, you have to do those on this layer. So here's a photograph of the completed block in stage. This has taken about three hours so far. I tend to leave the painting for a while now, firstly for so it can dry completely and also it gives me a fresh mind when I come back to it because I think there may be things that need to be adjusted. So that's the colour block in done. I'm pretty happy with where it is right now. I think there might be a few changes to do going forward into episode 3. Um, episode 3 will look at the detailed parts of the picture um, where hopefully it will really sort of start to come to life. 
Um, if you have any comments on this episode, please leave them below and uh, please subscribe by pushing that red button. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.